mystery still lost in time. They were known for believing in ancient traditions thought to sustain their well-being and beauty. These traditions used elements that originated from sacred plants. It was said that these plants were gifts received directly from the gods. Indeed, it was also said that these people had descended directly from the gods as well. Whatever their origins, some 2,000 years before Columbus discovered a new world far across the Atlantic Ocean, these explorers would set off towards the east into the currents of the more daunting Pacific, a people in search of destiny. And so they came, these ancient explorers, venturing from island to island across the perilous seas over a course of centuries. Stewards of the ancient gifts, they carried forth their treasures, planting and nourishing these wonders of nature, which would bless their lives and the lives of generations to come. Fenua, te fenua, te rai, e te rai. Here, in this most perfect environment, alongside their sacred plants, these people would flourish. Most prized and revered among the sacred plants received from the ancients was a peculiar fruit-bearing tree, referred to as noni. Not a simple food staple, as were many of the plants born here by the early settlers, the precious noni was the basis of honoured Polynesian traditions stemming from before recorded time, which held that noni could be used to maintain health and help restore a man's energy and vitality. Indeed, the lives and culture of the early Polynesian people were profoundly blessed by the mystical Noni. Their destinies were intricately intertwined. Together, they had been swept away to this remote island paradise from which all Polynesia would spring. Here, nurtured by pristine bounty, they had thrived. 
And yet to the rest of the world, these people and their sacred noni were otherwise forgotten or unknown. But such would not last forever. Nearly two centuries later, Ralph M. Heineke would receive his doctorate in biochemistry from the University of Minnesota. Upon this accomplishment, his first desire was to escape the cold Minnesota winters, and so he took a job with the Dole Pineapple Company in Hawaii. My assignment was to find application for the enzyme which I had to uh, develop a method for producing from the pineapple stem. Here was this tropical island with many plants which I had never seen before. And among them was a strange green fruit called noni. Based on the findings of his research, Ralph Heineke would publish key articles in several scientific journals on the beneficial properties of the noni plant. Within only a few years, these articles would spark the interest of a man being led on his own journey of discovery. Through the initial discoveries of this fruit, I realized the great potential. And it was when I came across a paper by Ralph Heineke. He described in this paper the mechanism of how and why it works. Everywhere I went on the island of Tahiti, the most interesting things happened. The native Tahitians began telling me stories of the nono fruit, how it helped their grandmother or their grandfather, their aunt, their uncle. But there was still a major obstacle. There simply wasn't enough fruit to support a large company. Through a translator, however, I learned that there was a super abundant supply of the nono fruit on the islands of Marquesas, nearly a thousand miles away. afternoon, we stopped at the edge of the road to rest our legs. In the sky was large, white, billowing clouds. My eyes were drawn to that sight, so I walked across the road, and there was a large ravine below. It was a stunning sight. The valley was just full of this fruit. Immediately, I knew that we had all the fruit we needed. It wasn't a secret, but yet the world didn't know about it. The next thing was to find the right partners. I knew if we could find the right partners, nothing could stop us. Soon after rediscovering the secret of the Noni, John Wadsworth was joined by Stephen Storey, Kerry Acey, Kim Acey, and Kelly Olson. The gift of Noni had been handed to a new generation and to a new set of stewards. From across the wide Pacific and into the rocky mountains of Utah, what would become of this precious gift? What would these new stewards, a company called Tahitian Noni International, do with this awesome responsibility? We are heirs. We have become part of this story. And I have to tell you, we can't think of the history of Noni without feeling emotionally tied to every single person and event that has taken place, you know, since you know, four or 5,000 years ago when it first became noticed by man. To be sure, a promised day will come, not so long from now, when Tahitian noni juice has been received by all the world. A day when this singular fruit from this exotic corner of the earth is planted in the hearts and minds of people everywhere. For Tahitian noni juice, a day of fulfilled destiny.